There are so many factors to consider when you're choosing a new running shoe. Well, the market has a huge amount to offer with brands promising that their shoe is going to help make you run further or make you more efficient. Some even promising that they're going to help you run faster. So it can be a little overwhelming. Well, today I'm going to be breaking it down and starting off by having a closer look at the foot and how it moves and then covering the options of trainers that there are out there so we can help you to choose the perfect shoe for you. Before we go into the biomechanics, there are several things to consider when choosing a shoe and these are going to help you narrow down that search. So what type of terrain are you going to be running on predominantly? And are you going to be doing long runs or short runs? Do you want this shoe to be a training shoe or a racing shoe? Or maybe you want a shoe that covers both of those. Also, then you need to look at yourself and consider your style of running and your weight. If you are on the heavier side or if you're someone who runs quite heavy, then you might well want to find a shoe that's got more shock absorption properties. Those are probably the easier questions to answer, but now we need to look at how you move and what your foot does at heel strike, mid stance and toe off, the shape of your foot and also how your arches function throughout that movement. Well for this we are going to be heading to our local specialist store, Running Bath, for a little bit of help. This is a specialist running shop and it happens to have a foot plate which is great for analysing how your foot moves and looking at your running gait but bear in mind you still need to have a specialist to be able to interpret that information and then help recommend what shoe you need to buy. And even if your running store doesn't have this equipment it's still really important to go to a store because the guys working there sell running shoes day in day out so they know what to look for and how to advise you but also you can try the shoes on as tempting as it might be to go and buy them online. Trying on plenty of shoes is really important but more more on that coming up. Now it's time to take a closer look at your actual feet. Now a small amount can actually be ascertained whilst in standing. Obviously you can see the shape of your foot and work out the size. And you can also take a closer look at the arch. You might have heard of flat feet. Well that's when you basically have a collapsed arch. So the arch is the middle part of your foot and when it's collapsed or flat then the majority of your foot will be in contact with the ground. The opposite to that is having a high arch when you can see a gap between the arch of the foot and the ground. Standing, however, only shows half of the picture. Ideally, you want to have a dynamic assessment so you can truly analyse how the foot moves throughout the weight-bearing phase. Well, this is where the arch plays a big role because it actually acts to elongate and flatten and store potential energy that then is repaid during the toe-off phase of the running gait. This is where if you've got very flat feet or you over pronate, your foot's actually going to struggle to restore that energy and return to supination at the end of the toe off phase. So as a result, you're going to be less efficient because you're losing energy. However, on the opposite end of the spectrum, it's not really any better because if your arch is too high or you actually have too much supination, then you're going to struggle for shock absorption because that's the role of the arch. And also with that, your foot's going to find it hard to adapt if you're running on any uneven terrain. You might have heard of some confusing running shoe lingo and I have to put my hands up, yes, I've already talked about pronation and supination, but these are probably the two most common terms. So supination is when your underside of your foot turns inwards. I like to think of it as if you look down, you're almost trying to make a bowl shape for soup with your feet, but that's just how I learn it. And then pronation is the opposite when the inside of your foot or bottom of your foot turns outwards. And then there's over pronation. Now, I don't particularly like this term because it's presuming that there's a correct amount of pronation in the first place so it's one that I tend to avoid. Once you know how your foot moves you can in theory narrow down your search. Comfort plays an important part when choosing a shoe and if you're currently not injured and you're not planning on changing the type of running or the distance you're going to be doing then don't change anything dramatically. You might consider wanting to get a gait analysis but it can be dangerous because if you're running with no problems it still might pick up some abnormalities which you could then try and change and as a result could end up having problems from that. And it is worth remembering that a shoe is not designed to correct your gait. It's there to support your foot in running. And if you do want to change your gait, I'm afraid that's going to involve some hard work in the gym, working on drills and doing stretches. Sorry to disappoint on that one. Road running shoes tend to come under three categories. You have the motion control for the over pronator, you've got stability shoe for a neutral runner, and then you've got the more cushioned shoe for a supinator. And the three components that make up a shoe, or the three main components that you probably want to be aware of, are the upper, which consists of the toe box, so around the front, the mid, and then the heel cup. 
And then you've got the midsole, so the bit in the middle. And this is where the cushioning and the stability is built into a shoe. And then finally, you've got the outsole on the bottom. And then the stack height is referring to the depth of the shoe. So the distance from the ground to the top of the insole on the inside. And obviously that's gonna be a bit higher at the heel compared to the toe. And this difference is known as the heel toe offset. And you'll find that that's much less in racing shoes compared to training shoes. Comfort really is key when you're buying a new pair of trainers. So always have this at the forefront of your mind. And sometimes for no apparent reason, you'll just put on a pair and they'll feel more comfortable than others. So it's another reason why it's so important to actually head to your local running shop to try them on first. And once you are trying them on, a good tip is to make sure you can fit a thumb's width between the tip of the trainer and your big toe, just to ensure that there's enough room for your foot inside the shoe. I've touched on it earlier, but don't change anything drastically with your shoe, especially if you don't have any problems at the moment. And I know it is easy to be influenced by marketing campaigns or nice new bright shoes in the shop window, but really you need to think about your biomechanics and foot health because that, at the end of the day, is far more important than what the shoe looks like. But having said that, we are actually spoiled for choice on colorways and things now with shoes, so hopefully you can end up ticking both boxes. When you're going to a running shop, Quite a good idea to take your old pair of running shoes with you because not only will that then make sure that the shop know what type and style of shoe you're using exactly if you're not quite sure but also they can then have a look at it and see the wear so they can determine what type of runner you are and therefore if you do want to change it a little bit what style of shoe would suit you and finally talking of things that are normal for you make sure you take a pair of socks or even wear them the sort of socks you'd normally run in because it's amazing how the thickness of a pair of socks can really change the difference in the feel or even the tightness of a new pair of shoes. Go with plenty of time and don't rush the trying on process. So even if the shop assistant gives you one pair of shoes which you think fit fine straight away, please try on at least another couple of pairs because you really do need that comparison. And then once you've got a pair you think you like, make sure you try them on and to have a little bit of a run, whether that's on a treadmill in the store. If they don't have one, then even head out into the corridor just to really get a good feel. And don't be pressured to buy there and then. If you need to go away and think about it, please do. As apparently there's evidence that actually shows comfort plays quite a significant part in finding a shoe that helps with injury prevention. And then also do your research, speak to specialists and try and work out what brand is best suited to your foot. This doesn't mean you're fixed to them, but having some knowledge will at least help to make that process less daunting. And if you can, speak to your coach or physio and hear their thoughts. Now, sadly, running shoes, or good ones at least, aren't cheap, but please don't scrimp because your feet and your body do need looking after. So see it as an investment. If you think about it, less trips to the physio or the doctor because you've got good fitting shoes are actually going to obviously save you money and reduce any levels of stress and also discomfort. And then finally, once you've found that perfect fitting pair of trainers and you've bought them and you've gone home desperate to go out for running them, just label when you've bought them and try to record how many miles you're running in them so you know when they need replacing. And if you're anything like me, once you've found that perfect pair of trainers, it's just so exciting to lace them up and head out the door to run. I really find it very motivating having a new and decent pair of shoes. If you're anything like me and you share that thought, give me a thumbs up on this video. Hit the globe to subscribe to make sure you get all of our other videos here at GTN. And if you do want to know a little bit more of how to know when you need to replace your running shoe, you can find a video I made on that just up here. And if you're intrigued in the biomechanics of running, we've done a video on barefoot running, and that one can be found just here.